Now I am here with uh, Richard Hornsby and Jeff Dean and those photos did draw a bit of an emotional reaction from Casey Anthony. We did see her wiping tears. Uh, how significant is that to the jury, Richard? Well, it, it all depends on how the jury thinks uh, Casey's doing this. If it's a natural reaction or if it's contrived so that, um, you know, it shows some emotion on her part because she's been very emotionless um, up until this point. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, a jury, while they may have some sympathy, they're going to put that aside if they really do believe that she caused Kaylee's death. And that's going to be a huge issue that the defense is always going to have to deal with from this point forward. Jeff, you're a former prosecutor. What do you want the jury to take away from those photos after you've shown them? Well, they have some evidentiary value, but the uh, truth of the matter is that this case, the way it's evolved, has set up to be uh, admitted by both sides that the child is dead. Uh, the defense has said that this, this baby died uh, in a pool accident. Uh, the state's now alleging that it's actual intentional murder. So what I want them to take away is, first, I want them to refocus. This is why we're here. This baby died. Look, I'm showing you this baby died. And then secondly, I want them to start to understand that we're still moving forward with evidence. And this is evidence. And I think that uh, the demeanor of the prosecutor, Linda Drain, uh, verdict when she was doing uh, the pictures methodically, very, very unemotional, uh, very methodical. She was treating that uh, witness just like every other expert witness, conveying to the jury, this is still evidence. You've refocused now, but this is still evidence, and we need to, we need to show you this. Now, Richard, in his cross-examination after the photos were shown, Jose Baez was asking that crime scene investigator um, about such things as the duct tape appearing to be loose and not necessarily over the skull. Is he laying the foundation for this whole argument he made in opening statements that that crime scene was staged by Roy Kronk? Well, I Jose Baez is laying uh, several different seeds that he's hoping will, will grow depending on how the jury takes in all the evidence. On one hand, I think he's trying to plant a seed that if you don't buy my Roy Kronk theory, that this duct tape, while it may have been part of the crime scene, it got attached inadvertently or it wasn't used as a murder weapon. He's trying to make that point that even if you don't believe the Roy Kronk issue, you don't there isn't enough evidence to believe that the duct tape was a murder weapon. The second issue is, yes, he's trying to somehow uh, show that, um, that possibly would... The body may have been placed there um, before, long beforehand by Roy Cronk, and he got messed up by the weather, and so he came back, and it shows that um, why it had been removed. But at the end of the day, you got to wonder, if you're blaming on Roy Cronk, why do you even want to attack the duct tape that much? Because either it's Roy Cronk or it's not if you're the defense. And this goes back again to his opening statement. Why lay yourself out there like that? And, Jeff, what do you think of Jose Baez's cross-examination and bringing up the duct tape? Well, for once, I kind of understood his focus on the duct tape, uh, on, a, on a particular question. The duct tape is the murder weapon, and that's what they've said that it is. And so his particular questions have to be linked back to his defense, but he was asking questions that probably set up something else if you believe they have a defense. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your insights. We are going to go back to the studio right now, but we will be back here outside the Orange County Courthouse with more. All right, Amanda, thank you. Yours remains in a garbage bag, and the photos have been uh, blocked out, blurred, so that you don't see any of these images. But uh, these are the, the, the photos showing that scene inside the woods, about 20 feet off the main road, where Kaylee Anthony's remains were discovered in a garbage bag under this brush and surrounded by some of the the items that we heard in the testimony, a bag, uh, a couple of clothing items, and then of course that skull with the duct tape on it. The jury is taking a lunch break right now. We expect court to resume at 1.30 this afternoon. We'll take you live there as soon as that happens. In the meantime, let's check in with West 2's Amanda Ober, live at the West 2 Courthouse Studio. Amanda. I don't think Amanda can hear me right now of the crime scene. We've been very careful to pixelate, to blur out anything that depicts Kaylee's skull. Gentlemen, I know you were able to get a glimpse of them from the monitor that we have here uh, over the set. What type of impact do you think these would have on the jury? I mean, you're seeing them yourselves for the first time. Well, the, the biggest thing it shows me, and it seems to be a theme that the defense developed pre-trial, and you got to think they're going to try to raise it during the trial, is the, the growth in the woods. I, I really think the prosecution is going to have a, a strong argument that this body was placed there a long time ago um, and that it, it, what, it couldn't have been done while Casey was in jail because it's always been kind of an issue that this, the defense could raise. It, and just the, the overgrowth and the stuff, I think the jury will really key in on um, 
you know, especially for this time of the year. Jeff, what about you? There's a constant uh, theme in these pictures, and it's the uh, weather. You can see how much it's grown up. Uh, wet. All these things are, even though uh, we're getting sort of blurry picture of the actual evidence, the, the uh, woods are thick. Uh, it's been flooded there uh, from the descriptions of the evidence, the actual evidence in the courtroom. There was mud. This skull is not uh, completely out in the open. It's partially buried. The tape evidence, which is the murder weapon, is sort of separated from the uh, face of the uh, skull. The, the issues with this um, have to do with the time of death, mm -hmm. when it was put there. These uh, pictures are going to show, uh, like nothing else can, what it is that the deputy and uh, Roy Cronk encountered when they were out there. I think in a really, really weird sort of way, it's almost serendipitous that you could have even seen this if you, did, if you weren't looking for it. And that raises the, the, the big question I think the defenses would be pointing out is that how could you have found this? I mean, there was hundreds of searchers out there looking for, the, for this body, and it was right under the nose the whole time, and all of a sudden you have this meter reader who magically comes out of nowhere and goes there not once, not twice, but almost three times, and is able to see uh, this body that far in, and it's that difficult. Now, and the, the highlight to me, if I'm the defense to try to pull out, is that the, the, one of the persons taking the picture said, uh, you know, these pictures are actually clearer than it was for me when I was there with my glasses in the rain. And if I'm the defense, I really build upon that issue to raise a, a seed of reason reasonable doubt. Um, you know, it's this one thing and it kind of goes a little bit contrary to their argument, but it's something they've got to key in on. Yeah, and you make a good point. All they need to do is raise that seed of reasonable doubt. They just need that one juror, right, Jeff? Amanda, we get, we're getting closer and closer to the state's real problems. And at the closer you get, like I said yesterday, the more circumstantial a circumstantial evidence case becomes because here's the part where they have trouble. Now, they present it professionally, they present it seamlessly, they're putting it out there with no gaff. They're showing you what they have, but in the, at the end of the day, the cause of death and, and when and how this all occurred is still not in their hip pocket by any stretch of the imagination. The law has always favored Casey Anthony in this, and you're going to start to see now how, this, how the state has to accomplish getting to premeditated intentional murder and this is going to be difficult it's always going to be difficult but this is starting to set up here here's our problem look and look what they did even at the beginning of today before they started putting these pictures on they put her brother on just to remind you one more time what kind of lies she can tell her lies are so specific and fantastic that you can't believe she spends the time to think about this. right right one Very more let, let me just remind you one more time this is who we're talking about now let me show you our, we're going to start on the weakest part of our case. They're very skilled at this. There, there are a lot of issues that they have to deal with if you're the state attorney at this point. Now, that's an interesting point, Jeff, because I think this morning some of us watching kind of wondered where they were going with having Lee retell that whole story of how Casey claimed that Zanny held her down in a park and kidnapped Kaylee. But you're saying it was just to remind the jury. He, this he, is had, he had one specific point that he didn't delete anything from that computer yeah. and the rest of it but he said that in about a second. It, well, I think there's one other big issue that I think the state's going to raise once the defense puts on their argument, and they're setting it up, that Casey Anthony's lies surround about around the information she knows at the time. So when she first came up with the Zanny, the nanny thing, it was based upon the limited information. She knew nobody had any information. Then once everybody knew that the child was missing, she comes up with the kidnapping. And so finally you're going to have the defense the statesman say she knows all the evidence, and so she came up with the one explanation that could explain it all the way. And that's what they're going to try to hone in on at the end of the case. What do you think might be ahead the rest of today? Well, I think there's going to be more to deal with these forensic pictures and maybe the medical examiner's coming. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for being here. Appreciate your insights. We will be covering the testimony live all this afternoon. Hope you stay with us. For now, reporting live from the Orange County Courthouse Studio, I'm Amanda Ober for West T News.